Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India basically derived uh, expression for various parameters like specific thrust, thrust specific fuel conjunctions and uh, other efficiencies. Right? If you look at uh, this thrust specific fuel conjunction, we have looked at it and uh, derived this expression. You can note from this expression that thrust specific fuel conjunction is dependent on the altitude. Right. If you look at A naught and it is the altitude which will tell us whether it is, you know, what temperature and the kind of thing. And flight mass number, right. And it will be dependent on how much heat you have added, the tau P, that is the burner or what is called combustor. So similarly, we can find out expression for TSFC and these are parameters, right. Apart from this... Uh, what you call tau b m naught a naught it is also dependent on tau r but it is again function of flight mach number if you look at and of course the kind of fuel you are using that is heat of uh, what you call combustion right and we have uh, looked at propulsive efficiency and of course here we are using another parameter that is tau lambda right and apart from tau r so, uh, thermal efficiency, it is uh, really doesn't depend on the tau v, you know, when I am saying tau lambda, tau v is, you know, inside this propulsive efficiency. So, uh, and overall efficiency is nothing but, you know, multiplication of propulsive efficiency. What we will do with these equations? You can say, look, we have derived it, but our objective is to carry out a parametric analysis. So that we can see which parameter is important, how to optimize and how to go about under ideal conditions, right? And that's why this is known as on design analysis. This can be used as a tool for designing anything, right? And keep in mind that we don't have any geometry. We are just talking about, therefore, this sometimes known as rubber engine, you know, like nothing is there, but you are thinking it will be there and then this, and looking at it. So, what we will do, we will look at parameters and we will take this, uh, in, uh, you know, data that is altitude, let's say a ramjet is flying at altitude of 20 km, generally it will be a little higher altitude and Mach number we are varying 0 to 8, of course, 0 I can't say because uh, I have just taken, uh, you know, just to completeness say, right? <laughs> And TT4, that is the turbine, uh, sorry, that is the exit temperature of the combustors. It is uh, uh, 3 we have taken, 1400, 1800, 2200 Kelvin. And we are basically, let us vary this, use this equation, maybe in a computer program or something to do a lot of calculation. One can do in hand, but generally you can write a small program and then generate data and plot it and see how it is varying and analyze those data also. Plotting is not enough, but you will have to derive some inference from the data. As I always say that all information, you know, uh, uh, cannot be converted into knowledge. Of course, rather information doesn't mean knowledge. Knowledge has to be obtained from the information. All information are not data, right? So, you need to understand that. So let us see that what we are doing here, we are basically uh, pl uh, plotting the specific thrust versus the Mach number, right? And for three temperatures, like 1400, 1800 and 2000. If you look at this curve is basically for the 1400 Kelvin temperature, TT4. This is basically TT4, right? If you look at this is TT4, 
So what you can note from here, the specific thrust with the Mach number for a particular com uh, exit temperature, combustor exit temperature, right? It is goes on increasing till it attains a particular maximum values at particular Mach number. Then again it decreases. Question arises why it is happening, right? And the another interesting thing you can observe that at when the Mach number is zero, the thrust or the specific thrust is zero. Right. If I will increase uh, this temperature to 1800 Kelvin, you will get the similar features, almost like it is increasing and decreasing, but however, its peak value, of course it has increased from the lower temperature to higher temperature, and also the peak specific thrust occurs at a little higher Mach number. And similarly, for the when you go for the 2000 200 Kelvin, you will have a similar value, only there is a little shift in the uh, maximum uh, specific thrust at a little higher maximum, right? Only that is the difference, but it is similar, right? But if you look at why it is so, because as the Mach number increases, right? What happens? You get the ram pressure in case of ram engine. So the pressure is higher and you will get the higher thrust, right? Of course, you are adding it. But as soon as it will, or, or when it attains a maximum value, like that is optimum uh, Mach number, basically, then what happens? Why it decreases? Because suppose you are flying at, uh, you know, let's say three Mach number, right? For a lower temperature. So what will happen at the temperature at the exit of your air intake, it will be much higher. And then there is not much heat you can add to the fuel because the restriction on the temperature, 1400 Kelvin, right? And as it is so, then, you know, like what will happen, some of the things will be really decreasing out, right, decreases. And it became whatever your energy you are giving, and at the higher Mach number, whether it is coming, so it cannot be converted into thrust because the drag, if you look at the inlet drag, will be much higher. In this case, what we are doing? We are saying this exit uh, thrust because the, uh, what you call, high velocity hot gas, right, is coming out of the jet, right? And as a result, you are getting a thrust. But here, as I am increasing, for example, like if I as I am increasing the flight Mach number, then your thrust will be decreasing. Like for example, if you look at M9, V9 minus M0, V0. So as I am uh, increasing this Mach number, you know, if I am increasing Mach number, what happened? This became high as compared to this because this is limited by your how much heat you can add and how much, you know, kind of things. So therefore, as a particular heat input, you know, this will be goes on increasing so that will negative weight therefore this is decreases right that makes sense to you any doubt because this part is decreases because your inlet drag is higher with the higher magnitude for the same engine keep in mind same engine so there is another interesting thing you can look at it that is uh, what you call the specific thrust it decreases right like uh, at a lower Mach number, it is quite high and as the uh, Mach number increases, right Mach number I mean, then it, it, it reaches a small value, then after that it goes on increasing, but in a very, very low. So if you look at, but in this region, like where the Mach number is very low, although you are getting a specific uh, thrust in this Mach number, but the uh, TSFC is very, very high. But when what happens at the zero? Zero, it will be infinite, very, very high. That means it's having no meaning, you know, like that way. Therefore, uh, you know, the the problem of zero static thrust at the Mach number zero is a really a critical problem for the ram jet. So you can also note that TSFC goes on decreasing as uh, basically you are decreasing the temperature. Rather, in other words, 
when I am increasing the exit uh, temperature from the combustors, the TSFC goes away, which is obvious because as you uh, want higher temperature, you need to consume more fuel. Right? So, if you look at the propulsive efficiencies, these are uh, basically uh, what you call is increases with the flight uh, Mach number for the same temperature. However, the thermal efficiency doesn't depend on the Mach number, uh, on the increase in temperature, but it does depend on the Mach number because it goes on increasing with the flight Mach number. And overall efficiency multiplication of two, you can see these are the overall efficiency which is uh, increases with the flight Mach number. Right. So, uh, I mean, this is the thing what we have learnt in this, and we can also carry out several parametric variations, try to understand what is happening with this equation. So, uh, let us start this lecture with a thought process as I is without life, heart without love, so human life without freedom is meaningless. So, let us uh, look at what we learnt in the last lecture. We have basically looked at ramjet engine and carry out the analysis and uh, we have also looked at a parametric studies right and how this uh, thrust or the specific thrust will be varying with Mach number for a range of temperature temperature means combustion uh, exit temperature combustor exit temperature and we have looked at propulsive efficiency overall efficiency and thermal efficiency now what we will do we will be looking at basically an example and use those expression and do that. And I will take the same example and use a, another method. You can say this is the method 1. I am doing that. No, okay. Method 1. So, what is that? An ideal ramjet engine flying with a flight Mach number 2.5, altitude of 20 km, maximum allowable temperature is 2200 Kelvin. And we will have to determine specific thrust, thrust specific fuel consumption and all other efficiencies, right. And these are the given, like altitude is given and temperature T4, all those things I have already talked about and CP we are assuming 1.00, 5 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. So this is the process what we have looked at, TS diagram, you know, like 0 to 1 is your basically compression or RAM compression. And this is the heat addition combustion from T to, uh, station 2 to the 4. And this is your expansion is the north. Right. So what we will do, we will basically know these values. We will look at it uh, kind of things and then do the need to. Right. Method 1 as I told you, we have already derived those expressions for the specific thrust. So what we will do, we will just, we know these values. This is 2.5 right do you know that and we will uh, find out a naught of course we know altitude we know the temperature right and knowing that we can find out a naught is equal to root over gamma uh, rt right so that is a naught is equal to gamma, root over gamma rt naught and we get this so we, we not know that right and uh, if you look at uh, the specific uh, thrust is, I mean like, you know, then we need to find out tau b, right. Tau b is, what is that? By definition, it is TT4 by TT2. We know TT4, that is 2200 Kelvin, which is given, and we need to find out TT2. So, how we will find out TT2? TT2 is equal to TT0. Right, we know T naught into one plus gamma minus one divided by two m naught square. We'll multi substitute these values. Right, this is given from the altitude to one six point six Kelvin. When you substitute values, we'll get four eight seven point three seven Kelvin. Right, and then you substitute, we get these values. And once we get these values, right, we know basically. Uh, whatever the parameter in specific thrust that is a naught is known m naught is known tau b is known so you can substitute those values and get the specific thrust so uh, if you look at i am just substituting these values and then i am getting 8 to 
8.71 newton per second per kg right because it is per unit mass of air flow rate right? specific thrust is being thrust divided by the uh, mass flow rate of air which is entering into the inlet of the engine so uh, the expression for tsfc can be used to evaluate its values right we know this by definition cp t not and tau v is already evaluated delta s is known a not is known m not is known you just substitute these values and you get so do you know this tau r tau r is a very simple thing what you will have to do tau r is equal to 1 plus gamma minus 1 divided by 2 m not square so i know these values i know gamma so i can find out very easily and tau r is basically what you call tt naught by t naught or tt2 by t naught whatever rather the basic definition will be t naught so if i substitute these values i will get 48.2 milligram per newton second i put in milligram so that it will be easier to you know remember keep it otherwise you can put in si unit kg per newton second Right. And propulsive efficiency can be de determined very easily. And 60, uh, you know, if you substitute this tau v in this place, you will get 64.03. Keep in mind that I need to multiply by 100. Right. <laughs> so in percentage, we always feel comfortable. Therefore, we put that. Right. <laughs> So similarly, thermal efficiency, uh, we know this tau R, 2.25, and you can get 55%, right? And when you multiply these things, right, you will get the thermal overall efficiency 35.57%, even under ideal condition, which is a quite a low value, you know, if you compare to your uh, other engines, right? Now, what we will do, when you are doing this thing, you don't have a feel about, let's say, you know, what is the exit Mach number, right, or what is the exit velocity, and what is really happening, right. So, and also there is another way, uh, you know, of that you need to remember those, you know, formulas, particularly in examination. So, what we will be doing, we will be looking at direct, you know, this one, and look at each point like station points and see what we can do and sometimes we may use this you know uh, methodology to some extent to make it simpler but this will give a physical feel when you are looking at it but those things whatever we have derived those expressions are mean for computer programming so it is more mechanical in nature so i would ask to use the method to particularly while you are solving and try to understand the problem. But whenever you want to mechanize it or you want to uh, do a several repetitive calculations, right, then you can adopt the method once and which is essentially designed for a, what you call parametric studies and when nowadays computer is available, you can use that very easily without really thinking much, right. So what we will do, we will basically looking at uh, specific thrust is equal to V9 by minus V0, right? And of course, we are assuming V9. What is this V9? V9 is the root over gamma RT, 2 divided by gamma minus 1, Pt9 by 9, power to the gamma minus 1 gamma divided by gamma minus 1, right? So that means I need to determine this T9, I need to determine this P9. Do I know really P9? P9 I know, it is nothing but your P9, okay. But do you know the P9? You know the altitude, so you know the P9. So similarly, we will have to find out Pt9, right. And uh, V0, we need to find out, that is a very simple one, which is same as that of the previous method, that is A0, M0, and you just substitute these values, you will get 73.5. 737.5 meter per second. At least you are having a feel what is V0. But in that other method, you do not know really. You substitute the values of M0 and you do not know what is the, what will be the velocity with which the, you know, ramjet is flying. 
right, or the <coughs> so that gives a feel. And as I told you earlier, what we'll have to do, we'll have to basically find out from here and go to this point, find out various properties, pressure, temperature, whatever it is required. Similarly, I'll have to go this point to T4, right, 4, and then find out what will be the uh, temperature T, T4, if it is not given, if it is generally it is given, or sometimes you need to find out, you know, that you do not know really and you'll have to cross check whether it is that. And then of course this you, you need to know or you'll have to find out. In this example or ideal situation, P9 is equal to P0, so you know. But in when you go for a real cycle, you won't be knowing this, you need to find out. P9 won't be known, some cases. So let us evaluate this PT9 by P9. You can use this method or you can go by some other method also, step by step. So these are the same thing I have done. So if you look at this uh, phi uh, d will be what? Phi d will be 1, right? Phi n will be 1. And what about phi b? Can I say it is as a 1? Right? And phi b is also will be 1 because there is no pressure loss in the total pressure loss in the burner, so this will be also 1. So that turns out to be pi r. And pi r you can find out very easily, so that you know this pressure ratio, and pt9 you can find out. I mean, you need not to, you can really substitute these values, and find out m9 is this much, 2.5. And interestingly, this m9 is happens to be same as that of the, what do you call it? Flight magnet. And that will be valid only for an ideal case. So, uh, now in order to evaluate the speed of, uh, you know, sound, A9, I need to find out now T9. T9, you can find out T9 by uh, this, uh, what do you call it? T9 kind of things. And you will get that, that it happens to be 977.8 Kelvin. So you say I have two equations, about two equations, we can evaluate V9, I know this V9 and I know the M0, I can point out. So this V9 happens to be 1567 meter per second and which is not same as of the flight velocity, which is 700 odd numbers, right. So when you substitute these values, you know, you will get 8 to 9.5 newton uh, second per kg. And you will see that it is almost same as that of the earlier method. So in order to estimate TSF, so we can evaluate all those things, CP, delta C, T, T4, minus T, T2. Right, this is, we are not using tau B, tau R, but you can put that it is happens to be 0 0.0, 0 0.04. And keep in mind that this is what you call a ratio, right. So, using this, uh, T, we can find out TSFC is equal to F by TS, that will be 4.82 into 10 power minus 5 kg per newton second, and which is same as that. So, propulsive efficiency can be evaluated as V9 by V0, right? And we know V9, we know the V0, so you can get uh, the propulsive efficiency very directly, right? And uh, thermal efficiency is same as that when you substitute V9 and V9. But, but here you can see that what is the difference, you know, in that velocity and how much change in the kinetic energy is occurring, you can have a field for it. Where you cannot get there, it is just a number and what will come in. So the overall efficiency will be 35.6. So what I am suggesting that you, you want to have a field, you will go for this method too. And I would uh, urge you people to use in your exam and other places the method 2 unless otherwise stated. Particularly in some assignment I will be giving in uh, some questions where you need to carry out parametric field. Therefore, method 1 has to be adapted for those problems. The rest of the problems, the method 2 is to be adapted. Is that clear to everybody? Okay, so method 2 gives a physical field, 
therefore it is very essential you should do that to have a feel for the what is happening what you want to do exactly so now we will get into the turbo jet engine we know that in the ram jet engine there is always to problem to get the uh, you know overcome the problem of zero specific thrust or the specific you know so as a result we cannot really make it airborne from the uh, what you call plane itself right so you need to have auxiliary units in order to overcome that one can think of using a compression and when you talk about the compression you know because it, it has to give some ram pressure to make it fly to make to produce thrust so uh, for that reason we need to have add also turbine so a turbo uh, jet engine if you look at it is nothing but similar to the ram jet engine with a turbo machinery if you look at there is a compression and to run the compression we need the turbine keep in mind that the the work obtained by the turbine is just meant to the run the compression that is the turbo jet engine and and all the thrust is being produced by expanding the gas in a nozzle that means in case of turbo jet engine the thrust is produced by expansion of gas in a nozzle rather nozzle is a component which gives you the thrust not the turbine or the compressor right so this is a very important concept you should keep in mind unlike uh, the other uh, you know particular turbo prop engine you know so we will be uh, using this uh, station numbers like 0 to 2 is your air intake and 2 to 3 is your compression 3 to 4 is your combustion chamber or combustor and 4 to 5 is your turbine that is expansion and 5 to 9 is your uh, what you call of course 5 to 6 and uh, you know 7 you can say there will be 7 this is known as the jet pipe but however 7 to 9 is your nozzle right so i have already discussed about this thing now we will be uh, what to call uh, looking at how the processes you know in a ts diagram so if you look at this process is basically what to call compression compression in air intake and this is your compression right and this is your combustion chamber constant pressure Uh, heat addition and this portion is your uh, expansion in a nozzle sorry expansion in turbine and this is in your nozzle right expansion it is similar to that what ramjet only thing you are having a comp contribution from compression and a turbine that's all but it is similar and if you look at pv diagram it will be similar to that only the division will be there in the compression and expansion part so uh, now what we will do we will do the similar uh, you know methodology to derive the expression for the thrust thrust produced by an ideal turbo jet engine will be same that what we have derived that m dot 9 v 9 minus m naught v naught if i take this a naught out you know uh, and m naught 9 out i will get v 9 by a naught minus m naught m naught is your prime maximum so a naught is the speed of sound and uh, we have already know this thing and the specific thrust can be uh, you know defined as i told earlier the thrust divided by mass flow rate of a is nothing a naught v 9 by a naught minus m the same thing what we have done so right and we know that v9 by a naught square is nothing but a9 uh, square m9 uh, square and a naught 9 we know that it is gamma 9 r9 t9 and a naught square you know that as gamma naught r naught t naught so this is cancel it out gamma is same as that so you land in getting t9 by t0 into m9 square so what we'll be doing we'll be doing the similar stuff of relating the various 
you know, pressure and temperature parameters in each component. It's uh, just extension of what we have done for the parameter thing. So, so PT9 by P, uh, uh, you know, 9 we know that it can be expressed for isentropic flow in terms of Mach number and exit Mach number if I just rewrite back that it will be M9 square is equal to 2 by gamma minus 1 PT9 by P9 gamma, uh, power to the gamma minus 1 divided by gamma minus 1, right. So we will be looking at this PT9 by P9 and look at uh, various pressure ratios. So if you look at in the similar way and uh, I have just written down here and if you look at this is a fully expanded so this will be 1 and PT by P0 what it would be this will be your pi R and PT by PT PT2 by PT0 this is nothing but your pi D and this is PT3 by PT2 is pi c and pt4 by pt3 is nothing but pi b and pt5 by pt4 is your pi turbine right and this is your nozzle you could say right and we know that this uh, what you call and uh, we can express in this similar in terms of pressure ratios right and under ideal condition what we can say we can say that pi b is equal to 1 right yes or no right and what happens to your turbine pi t can i say 1 pi c i can say 1 no 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 right and pi d can i say 1 yes or no Total no. pressure ratio, what happens in the pi D? Across compressor, no. No, compressor, no. Turbine is no. That as you were saying, right? Because we are, uh, you know, getting something, uh, doing the work on it and extracting the work in the turbine, right? So, what about pi D? What do we deal in the ramjet engine? Total pressure, what is happening? One. Huh? Uh, ram pressure. Ram pressure will be what? Total pressure will be remaining same or it will be different? It's isentropic process. Right? One hona chahi hai, right? Yes or no? Okay. So, and what about nozzle? One Is also one, right? Because we are just converting, you know, kinetic energy into the where into the static pressure or the dynamic head to the static head in case of your air intake and this is other way around the nozzle just opposite the static you know like uh, uh, static pressure we are converting into the dynamic head, right but the total pressure is remaining constant so therefore you will have to be uh, you know understand this concept so, pi n, pi b and pi d is equal to 1. So, this equation becomes, you know, like a pt by p9, pi t, pi c, pi r. In case of ramjet engine, pi t is equal to 1, pi c because there is no compressor, no turbine. So, you can directly get this expression. That means, if I know this equation, you know, expressions, I will get ramjet, turbojet, just making some parameter 1. You know, that's why that is the beauty of this analysis, right? I need not to do anything, okay? If I say pi t, pi c is equal to 1, that means it is a ramjet, right? That is the beauty of this relationship where computer, you can do very easily. I can put a condition and do that. Ramjet, scramjet, same equation, you know. So, <laughs> that you should must appreciate of this uh, relationship and uh, using equation 3, exit Mach number, I can get because I have already derived that is nothing but same as that and except this you know pi t and pi c being come into as compared to the ram jet engine right so if you look at this similar to that what we have done for the ram jet only two terms have come for the turbo jet pi t and pi c so uh, whereas a pi 
R, you know, is we can relate to the tau R gamma power to the gamma minus 1. And similarly for pi C and pi T, these are isentropic relationships. Pi means it is the pressure ratio, tau means it is the temperature ratio. So we know the pressure ratio can be related to the temperature ratio with the help of this gamma, you know, or the index. So <coughs> M9, you know, square, you can write down here itself if I put these values over in this place, you know, and also for pi r, I can get, in, instead of pi, I can get in terms of tau, that is tau t, tau c, tau r, right. So, we will do the similar way of getting this T9 by T0. You can write down T T9 by T0 divided by T T9 by T9. And we will go on doing that, all those things. If you look at it, will be, you will get this tau N, tau T, tau B, tau C, tau D and tau R. If you look at tau D is what? Is it 1? Because it is an adiabatic process in the air intake. There is no heat in it. So, therefore, that will be 1. Similarly, in the nozzle, is it you are adding some heat? You cannot, you are not doing anything. So, therefore, it will be 1. So, what about uh, tau C and tau T? Can I make it 1? And tau B certainly no because I am adding some amount of heat. Right? Can I make it? I cannot make the tau T and tau C as 1. That means the total temperature across the compression and across the turbine are changing. So it cannot be 1 because in one case compression you are giving you know amount of work and in that uh, turbine you are extracting the work from the fluid. So there will be change in total temperature. Otherwise you, where you will get anything. So therefore you cannot really make it 1. So T T9 by T0, it will be tau T, tau B, tau C, tau R. And again you can say this here, you can appreciate this point, that tau C and tau T will be 1 in case of ramjet. Right? The same thing I am repeating so that it will enter into your mind. So the expression T9 by T0 can be really, if you look at it, it is interesting. If I put this T T9 by T0, all those things, this is can and also T T9 by T9, you will see that it is can be cancel it out, this can be cancel it out and the tau c can be cancel it out, it happens to be tau b. And what we had seen in case of your ramjet engine, yes or no? We are doing the same thing but making it a little complex but this is cancel it out which is obvious because the turbo, in the turbojet engine the work you know, a uh, harness by the turbine is being utilized by the compression. Therefore, it must be T9 by T0 will be tau B. It will be how much it added into the combustors. Right? That is the thing what is saying and it is true also Ramjet. <coughs> so, the Ts, you can just substitute these values V9 by V0. Right? And you will get an expression which looks to be a little frightening. But however, it is quite simple to... I am not expecting that you should remember this expression. But however, you must know how to go about How to derive it. That is expert. Right? So, and which will be uh, quite uh, simple to derive this expression. And uh, very important, we need to now relate this turbine work into the compression work because we will have to get a relationship between the compression and turbine. <laughs> so, we will assume the one dimensional steady state energy equation, you know, uh, uh, this thing and we will apply this to energy equation, control volume and the turbine work will be M5 is equal to ST5 minus ST5, right? Because the Right, in the turbine and you keep in mind that here we are assuming, you know, like the mass is, continuity is maintained because one dimensional flow we are talking about. So, M not 5 is equal to M not 4. You are not adding anything except 
you know so same fluid is going so therefore which is nothing but that m not not keep in mind that here i am saying it is very very less than m not 5 or is very very less than m not so therefore i am saying this is m not is equal to m not 5 basically m not 5 is equal to m not plus m not f right but I am assuming this, so therefore M not F C P T T four minus T T five. Similarly, I can have for compression, which is same as that M not C P T three minus T T two, right? And uh, when we quit this, uh, the work done by the turbine is same as that of the work, you know taken by the compressor then we will get an expression you know tau t is equal to 1 minus tau r by tau lambda in the bracket tau c minus 1 keep in mind that we can express in terms of tau lambda because that is the thing how much heat you know being added or the total enthalpy at the exit of the combustor divided by the amount of enthalpy is entering into the engine right so if you look at it is this, you know you can rewrite it because this will cancel it out t t four by t t three into t t by t t two into t two by t t naught and t t naught by t. So you can write down in terms of all this tau b tau c this is the compression and tau d is for the air intake and tau r and you know that tau d is equal to one and uh, right. Because of it is a adiabatic process, we are saying no heat is going out, but in real situation it cannot be. But ideal uh, under ideal system is okay. So the fuel layer ratio can be expressed in terms of known variables. As uh, you know, we will have to consider these combustions, which we had done a similar thing in case of a ramjet engine. It will be same. So we can write down m dot a divided by m dot a is nothing but c p t naught delta s c, which you will see that tau b tau r tau c minus tau r tau c. You see this some step I have omitted here, but you can do very easily. And in case you will find some problem, you let me know. <coughs> right. And T S F C you can get uh, very easily. That is f divided by specific thrust. Right. And you will put this. The values you know now we are having several terminologies are coming like several ratio temperature ratio or pressure ratio keep in mind that uh, we can you know change this uh, tau c in terms of pressure ratio of compression similarly tau t we can you know some places wherever it is required we can change into the uh, pressure ratio across the turbine right uh, using the isentropic relations. So the relationship for propulsive efficiency, uh, we can write down uh, two uh, T V, basically the thrust power divided by kinetic energy change in the uh, engine. That is m dot v nine square minus v naught square divided by two. If I uh, just you know write in in place of thrust this equation, m dot uh, a into V9 minus V0, you will see that I can cancel it out and this will cancel it out and I will get V9 plus V0, right. If I divide it by A0 square here and similarly A0 square here, I will get 2 Mach num type Mach number divided by V9 by V0 plus M0. So this is the easier way of saying that because I know expression V9 by A0, I can do it in this, right. And also you can see that how this Mach number is really affecting your propulsive efficiency and thermal efficiency you can get, uh, you know, uh, do all those things algebra and you will get 1 minus divided by tau or tau C. Keep in mind that here tau C has come into picture in case of turbo jet, right. Earlier it was only 1 minus 1 over tau r in case of ram. Tau c is equal to 1. Right, in case of ram.
So proper overall efficiency will be nothing but propulsive efficiency multiplied by thermal efficiency will give more. That means by this we have derived all the expressions. We are armed with all the expression to the carry out parametric studies, right? And just to summarize those what we have derived, like I will, uh, <coughs> that is uh, the specific thrust we have done, and uh, these are the expression which is terms of various tau p, tau c, tau r, and we are using also tau lambda, and in place of tau lambda, maybe you know uh, this term tau lambda divided by tau c tau r is nothing but tau v. Some places you can use tau v as well. Right. So what is helping this specific thrust expression is basically separating each parameters and it is arming with us or helping with us so that we can do a parametric study. That you must appreciate. Otherwise I need not to go for this, you know, unless I am not interested in parametric and which is essential when I am trying to understand, you know, how it is the performance is affected by the various parameters. Right, the TSFC, and we know that F is, it can be expressed in terms of tau V tau or C minus tau R tau C and multiplied by C P T naught V tau C. And uh, these are uh, expression for propulsive efficiency, thermal efficiency which we have discussed just now and what we will do now we will take three cases one is the mag number of zero right that is the sea level conditions and another will take the long range you know uh, vehicle or uh, the aircraft what to use passenger record 0 0.85 which can operate at 12 kilometers altitude and then the fighter aircraft which is corresponding to 1.5 15 kilometer altitude and we are keeping this, the turbine, you know, like uh, inlet temperature or the combustor exit temperature is 1600 Kelvin, right, okay. So, <clears throat> and what we will do now, what are the variables we will be using? We will be basically using the, you know, we can uh, vary this pressure ratios across the combustor. You can say that why not vary the pressure ratio across the turbine? You can do as well because both are, you know, can be related easily with the uh, work, you know, because the work, whatever you are getting from the turbine is being utilized by the compression. So generally compression is a very important one. So therefore we use the compression as a parameter that will be varying from 1 to 40 and see that how we can choose a compressor, how we can choose a you know pressure ratio because the compressor size and you know cost will be dependent on the pressure ratio you are want to have for the engine right so that is a very important one so what do we are looking at is a specific thrust right being plotted on the y axis and the pressure ratio plotted on the x axis for a turbojet engine which is having turbine inlet temperature of 1600 Kelvin, right. And we are also varying this Mach number as I told you, three cases we have taken, represented this case. One is sea level condition or the, you can say static conditions, right. Other is 0.85 Mach number, flight Mach number and other is 1.5. What you can note here that the when this uh, flight Mach number is zero, the solid line, the specific thrust increases with the increase in pressure ratio across the compressor, and then it reaches a peak values here, and then after that it decreases slowly. Right. <coughs> so, what it indicates? That means there is the optimum value for the uh, what you call pressure ratio across the compressor for which you will get the maximum specific thrust. And however, if you look at the TSFC which I have shown here, that is it is a very high values at the low the pressure ratio 
of one, you know, because we cannot have zero pressure pressure plus compression. So one is, a, you know, that, that means no compressor as such, right? At that value, it is going towards infinity, very, very large. You know, it's having no meaning. I mean, you can't have any meaning in turbojet engine having a pressure ratio of one, right? Okay. But however, it decreases and, you know, it decreases continuously as you increase in pressure ratio you will see that this is having not a minimum values, right? Unlike in a ramjet engine, there is a minimum values, right? And of course, you will have to choose that. Uh, but there is another interesting thing you can observe. When I will go for the flight, uh, what you call, Mach number of 0.8, you will see that this is having, you know, it also having similar feature in both and increasing. And then, <coughs> of course, it is having a certain values of 20 kind of thing where you get the uh, maximum specific <laughs> thrust. But if you go for a flight Mach number of 1.5, you will have similar features, right? Similar nature of the curve, but only thing it is decreasing, you know, uh, after reaching a value of uh, certain maximum value at a pressure ratio of 9, you know, 5C is equal to 9, you are having, right? And then it decreases a little uh, at a higher rate as compared to the uh, both the sea level condition and or the uh, static condition and the slight maximum point. What it indicates? It indicates that when the flight or the engine is moving at a higher speed, it can use that pressure and you need not to go for a, you know, high pressure ratio compression because the ram pressure can be utilized, right, to uh, kind of, uh, for increasing its pressure, right. So therefore, it is, if you look at the fighter aircraft, will be having a smaller compression because you need a very low pressure ratio. Whereas you go for a uh, long range passenger aircraft, you need to have a go for 20 kind of things, right? But at the same time, you will have to look at what specific thrust you need because, right, uh, at a static condition, because static thrust is also important. So you will have to play around and see that what really you need and what is the level flight. Like. So these are the things you can get by just doing, you know, Specific, uh, parametric analysis, right? That is the beauty of this method. That you can learn a lot by just playing around and see what is happening, why it is happening, and what are the reason whether you can have any scope to improve it further or not. So let us uh, look at propulsive efficiency and the thermal efficiency. If you look at uh, these are the curves, which is you know basically the propulsive efficiency, these two curves, and it is a static condition, there will be no meaning of having propulsive efficiency when Mach number, type number is equal to zero, right? So, <coughs> whereas the, uh, what do you call, this one is basically Mach number of 0.85, it is having higher propulsive mm -hmm. efficiency as compared to 1.5, right? But it is having similar features in the when it is pressure ratio increases, right? It is very higher over here and decreases maybe at certain pressure it is minimum, which is not very obvious in this diagram, but when you look at number you will get that. And thermal efficiency, it is goes on increasing, you know, like from the lower pressure ratio to higher pressure ratio and you will get a lower thermal efficiency in case, case of, uh, you know, uh, zero flight Mach number and when you increases this 0.85 you know you will get a thermal higher efficiency and when it is the 1.5 kind of thing this one then it is because of you know like uh, your energy utilization point. So what we will do now I will uh, just look at uh, you know what happens the effect of temperature ratios and which is having similar views you can see that this is having highest temperature, you know, like 1800 Kelvin. So if you look at, you will have a higher pressure ratio you need to get to get a higher specific thrust 
and as the temperature uh, decreases you will get a lower specific thrust you know like a maximum specific thrust at a lower pressure ratios right why it is so because you know you need to have a higher what you call the temperature to be achieved right so therefore you need to <coughs> give you know more amount of pressure and you can get a higher kind of values and after that it decreases and <coughs> so uh, and whereas of course the higher temperature when you want to get and you want to get also a higher specific thrust so naturally you will pay a penalty for having a higher tsfc and uh, having similar view you know uh, well uh, vertical trend like as you goes on decreasing the uh, turbine inlet temperature you will go on decreasing the tsfc so you will have to make a this thing where you want to go and with this i will stop over in the next class we will take an example to see how we can you know solve this problem okay